Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back, Force here, and today we'll be checking out Akaniro Demon Hunters. This is a hack and slash action RPG that is set and inspired by this world that mixes Little Red Riding Hood and the stories of feudal Japan. Now this game's been in development for quite a while, and I have covered it in the past before. We're revisiting it today though, because it just popped up on the Steam Early Access program list, and so I thought now's a good time to... Uh, Take another look at the game, show you guys how it's progressed in its current state before you decide if you want to buy into it or not. Now I do need to let you know that although this is available for purchase through Steam Early Access, you're basically buying into getting some items in the game. It's a free to play game and you can play it 100% for free just by going to the game's website. So I'll give you all those details uh, come the end of the video for now. Let's just take a look at some gameplay and talk about the game. So once again, a hack and slash action RPG. As you can see here, I am running around hacking and slashing. Uh, my character that I'm playing is actually a fortitude focused character who has innate benefits in uh, defense and two-handed weaponry. Now there's three character types that you can begin with essentially. There is prowess, fortitude, and cunning. And once again, I am playing a fortitude character. Although you start off with a focus in one of those three, you can customize your character and build them how you want from there. Uh, basically, the unlocking of skills in this game takes the in-game currency, which are these little uh, karma shards that I'm picking up off the enemies. Um, and the, But then the, there's also a requirement, basically, of your basic stats, which are, uh, quickly here I can show those to you, power, defense, and skill. Now, since I'm a fortitude character, I'm primarily focused on defense, secondary power, and then lastly, skill. Um, so as you, as you level up your character, and you require currency, you can purchase the skills in any of the three uh, disciplines, prowess, fortitude, and cunning, but you start off focused on one of them. So again, um, that's, yeah, that's what I am here. I'm a fortitude dude. So two-handed weapons, uh, heavy armor, and defense are my primary focus. Uh, now my abilities that I picked up so far, uh, so I played through the beta uh, a, a fair amount in the past, uh, however, it looks like there had been a character wipe because as I went to revisit the game today, uh, my prior character wasn't available. So I spent uh, spent about an hour and a half or two hours this morning uh, leveling up this character. I'm currently at level 5. Come the end of this run, I should be level 6. And um, I, yeah, I'll show you some of the skills that I have access to right now because so far I've just been smacking things with my weapon here. I'll take out this Ghost Claw Prophet. Pick up some more loot and then break some bone piles. Okay. So, my current abilities right now, I've got three abilities. I have got... Let's go over here. Uh, my first ability here is Iron Thorns, a basic thorns attack. It impales, uh, impales thorns to attackers. Uh, I've got a Ring of Frost, which uh, creates a ring of ice burst from below, uh, slowing enemies and causing them frost damage. And that, lastly, I've got Chi Mend, rank 1, which will instantly recover health uh, for first aid in the heat of battle. Wonderful. So those are the three abilities that I have. I could purchase abilities and prowess and cunning, but so far in these early levels I haven't. In fact, I'm probably going to just primarily focus on the fortitude abilities for my character, and then secondary I'll pick up some prowess. If you're wondering what's the difference, um, so Fortitude, the defensive two-handed type, uh, Prowess is more offensive and focused on dual wielding, at least that's your that's your initial stat. And then Cunning has got some a uh, bunch of ranged abilities as well as sort of like ninja, ninja smoke and, and, uh, and, and little traps and things of that nature. So pretty interesting, uh, pretty interesting disciplines there. Nice differences between the multiple ones. Okay, so the thorns, I have got that bound over here to three, so I can hit three to activate thorns. And you'll notice that little purple, those little purple spikes popping up. So now whenever someone attacks me, damage will be returned to them. So while she'll attack me and he gets hit with damage. In fact, two, two hits from his own attack actually kills him, which is funny enough. My number one ability, which can also be activated by clicking on right mouse button, is my Ring of Frost, which is this. Bam, Ring of Frost right there, doing some damage to these fools. And then I'd like to get hit just to show you the healing. Although because I'm so defensive, I typically don't take a lot of damage. And all those crystals, beyond being the currency, those little red crystals that I'm picking up, those crystals also act as healing. But I'm going to take some damage here, and then I'll heal up with my Chi Men, which is down to number two. Okay, so we're going to hit two now, heal up. There we go, so it instantly heals, wonderful. All right, let me drop my thorns, and let me do my AoE, and take care of all the little, little fools there. And then we take out that guy. <laughs> Silly boss. You 
were so easy for me to kill. All right, so beyond the basics, you know, clicking on the ground to move around and uh, activating with one, two, and three. You can also tab through. There's three different loadouts, so I'm gonna tab once and then a second time, and you can see it still hasn't gone over, and tabbing for a third time will bring me up. In fact, I can show you that uh, more specifically here. So there's there's groups one, two, and three. So as I level up and I gain more, more skills in cunning, fortitude, or just more uh, cunning and prowess, or just more fortitude skills, I can bind them to these additional tab groups, which will switch between, uh, and these will have a one, two, and three, and this will have a one, two, and three as well. So quickly in the heat of battle, you'll be able to switch between them. Uh, to access the different abilities which is an interesting take on it um, also something pretty interesting about this game is beyond just being a standard game where you you can download the client and all that jazz uh, it's also browser based so you can play this game in your web browser in fact my first introduction to this game Oh boy, it's it's been it's been some time since this game's been in development and available for play. I, I, I think it's been at least six months, might even be close to a year to when my first video was released. I really can't recall at the moment. Uh, but when I initially played this game, it was 100% in the browser. Uh, it wasn't perfect there, and the game still has some uh, gameplay issues. Specifically, there seems to be a slight stuttering that occurs every so often. Uh, I initially chalked that up to, to latency through the web browser. If I take a look at my ping right now, it's at about 100, so not amazing, but not too, too bad. I love something close to 30, but you know. It is what it is. Uh, but yeah, I initially chalked the slight stuttering up to the fact that I was playing through a web browser and I figured it just, you know, it's a game in a web browser. So if it stutters a little bit, whatever. If there's a little bit of a little bit of delay in attacks and, and responsiveness, basically the time between me killing something and then it dying and items popping up or even my character just responding to clicks. Um, there's still that slight delay even though I'm currently playing the downloaded client version of this game. Now there appears to be still, still a little bit of a delay which is quite unfortunate but it's still in development. The game's not 100% complete so you know, it's available again through Steam Early Access, so clearly they're saying, hey, we're not finished right now, we're still going through development. In fact, I'm, I'm positive of that because of the fact that uh, there's still quite a few features in the main town even that aren't available at the moment. But I have to say, though, um, I still like this game quite a bit. There's a couple of things I like about this game. Uh, the, the biggest thing though, oh, look at this treasure all over the place. We'll take a look at loot in a moment. Uh, the biggest thing though is I love the, the theme and the art style in this game. I think it's pretty obvious by now if you've been watching my videos. I like the cartoony cell shaded vibe. I liked Borderlands. I liked uh, the aesthetic behind Call of Juarez Gunslinger for that reason as well. I just really like the way it looks and um, and just the tone that it sets. So this is the same type of a game. We've got the cartoony cell shaded look and I I think it's great. I adore it. I really do. And we do have one more quick area over here that I'd like to explore before we leave our current position. Once you've completed your mission, this little gem will pop up that will let you you get to click on it to return to your village. And if you didn't already figure it out, health mana there you go those are the two those are the two little icons right there uh, and then there's also there's i a and c i is for inventory a is for your skill tab and c is for your character panel and then there's also a t thing which still hasn't been implemented into the game so i don't know what what it exactly implies in fact that's something that wasn't there um back when i last covered this game at least a few months ago so i do wonder when they're going to implement that and exactly what it is to be honest with you I'm not positive right now. I can't believe there's still so much to explore over here. I finished the main objective and we still got all these little wolves and wolverines and werewolves. And <laughs> uh, we still got all these things to dispatch of. Okay, it looks like it was just a side branching path right there that looped up around. Alright, so we finished the mission. We've killed all the baddies. Let's go ahead and return to the village. This is the uh, the center base of operations, if you will. Uh, this is where you pick up quests and interact with NPCs. So I have leveled up here uh, and also got a karma reward for completing the mission, total experience gained, all that wonderful thing. And since we leveled up, I can show you the leveling up process. Every time you level up, you get to choose if you would like to upgrade your prowess, fortitude, or cunning. I am fortitude focused, so we will level up our fortitude, which will increase uh, defensive abilities. And this shows you the distribution. So I got plus three defense, plus two power, and plus one skill. And then also got some health there as well. Fantastic. 
Okay, so we've leveled up all sorts of fun stuff. Uh, we got a bunch of items in our run, so why don't we take a look at what we got. Uh, these red boxed items, those are items that are beyond my level range, although pretty much all of them are common items, so I'm probably just going to ditch all of those. Let's take a look at these uh, magical items here and see if there's anything worth my while. This thing has got more armor than what I currently have, but I've got a bunch of stats uh, on the piece that I have, which is the left side shows you the equipped. The one I'm moused over is the one I'm looking at, clearly, derp. And uh, I don't think there's anything here that I really want. All of these are out of my level range right now, but the fact that they're just basic items means I don't want them. And this is a fast attacking one-handed weapon, which I don't want either. So let's take a look at these ones. Four armor, small boost to total health. Mm, that's potential. Okay, what about this one right here? 46 to 57 damage. And it is a small boost to attack damage. Now the one that I have is 36 to 61. So this weapon has got a slower attack speed, but a a better uh, minimum damage, a little bit less higher damage. Uh, but I kind of like this maul, so we are going to actually equip that there. Fantastic. Ooh, it's got a nice animation on it too. Look at that, nice and pretty. Uh, this is, a, ooh, 28 to 67. Uh, slight chance of stealing health. Oh man, this is, that's an, that's a really nice top end damage. I think we're actually going to take this just a complete switcheroo there already. And oh, wait, what is this? 32 to 75? What? <laughs> Do we want this now instead? Oh, man. Yeah, sure. 75 possible damage. That's that's great. Wow, we're just all over the place here with our weapons. But that's the one I've decided on. And let's take a look at this hat. That's a funny little looking hat. I don't know, though. Hmm. This one's got defense bonus, plus I like the fact that it's a ninja mask, and uh, for that reason alone, we're just going to go ahead and put it on. Okay, I don't want to quick, quite go to this yet, the mission select. I want to show you around the town first. Um, I also want to quickly show you before I sell this stuff. Uh, while you're in the middle of a mission, you can transmute, which will let you sell items for half their normal price. You wouldn't technically want to do this here, but I will do it just to show you, so I can transmute. Whoops. I, what the heck? Switch, switch weapons, please. Okay, transmute. Okay, maybe I can't do that because I'm not in a mission right now. Okay, there we go. I was able to do it there. All right, so transmute, you just had to click on it and then right click. Um, so it's selling it for half of its normal price. Uh, but the reason you want to do that is while in a mission, if your inventory fills up, ta-da, you can all of a sudden just sell stuff and uh, continue along your merry way. Haven't really run into that problem personally. So here we are at a vendor. I'm going to sell all this junk here. And I've decided on the current weapon that I have is the one that I want. So we will sell these as well. At the vendor, you can also buy some items. Let's take a look if there's anything that I really want. We'll look at two-handed items here. 32 to 75. Yeah, that's pretty good. But I actually have a weapon that is that, um, that has that much damage. So I'm happy with the one that I have. And that's one of the better weapons. This one's actually really good too. A plus two defense skill. Uh, but it costs a ton of currency. I do have enough to technically purchase it, but we're not going to because I don't want to waste my currency on weapons since mine is almost as good. Uh, so the vendors you can buy gear and stuff from. Look, I can buy these different helms. Ooh, these are some nice looking helms. I like their, it's a little wolf thing too. That's kind of cute. Uh, and then there's amulets, you know, got some shirt things here, chest pieces, pants, and then this is a cape. So all sorts of different armor that you can buy. You buy it with the in-game currency, which are these Karma Shards. There are also Karma Crystals, which is an out-of-game currency. Plus, you can buy Karma Shards in the game. So you pick up Karma Shards. Let me explain the Karma Shards to you. Those little red crystals that drop from enemy, they are the in-game currency, and they double as uh, little mini healing potions. When you pick them up, you get a slight boost to health. The story basis for them, it's, it's like the crystallized blood of your enemies. Some crazy feudal Japan lore kind of stuff, but uh, it, it's kind of neat. Uh, now you can buy these, you can buy these karma shards right here. You can take a look, you can buy 12,000 for 50 red chili peppers, uh, 100 red chili peppers get you 200 and no, 25,000, 12,000, 55,000 for 200 red chili peppers. What are the red chili peppers? I believe if memory serves me correctly, 50 red chili peppers cost $5. I think that's right. It's either 50 or 100 costs $5. Um, I will 
give you a link to the website so you can look up that stuff. Uh, but yeah, the, you can buy these things here and the Karma Crystals, that's the second currency. And this is where you can buy things. I haven't seen any crystals drop in game. So I believe it's the case that you can only get them through purchases and you can buy yourself stuff like resurrection scrolls, which lets you revive and smite surrounding enemies. Um, you can also buy these different boosts here. Doubles your base power for 10 minutes, doubles your base skill for 10 minutes, uh, doubles your base defense for 10 minutes. There's also small boost to defense, small boost to skill, and small boost to power. So the crystals here, which appear to just be the currency that's only available by purchasing it with money, the crystals you can get in, uh, the, the shards, karma shards you can get in game, karma crystals, I believe can only be purchased with real money. And these are just for boost, increased movement speed, increased critical chance, uh, increased XP from monsters. How much is the non? Just a says small boost. It doesn't even give it a percentage. It's crazy. Uh, large boost to drop quality. So magic find, double energy regen rate, double HP regen rate. So you can purchase these boost with the karma shards that you can get in game. You can purchase better boost with the karma crystals, the consumables uh, that are only available for purchase with real money outside of the game. So that's the system, there you go, just laying it all out for you. Uh, but when it comes to all this gear and stuff, again, you can you can buy that with the Karma Shards, which are available in game. There's also some rare gear here that actually, these are only purchasable with the crystals. Now, I might be wrong, you might be able to get the Karma Crystals in game, I just haven't seen it yet. Um, so if you're gonna say, Force, is this pay to win? Well, it might be. Uh, there doesn't, appear to be any uh there doesn't appear to be any competitive yeah i can't see a way to get the crystals in game uh, there doesn't appear to be any competitive aspect this is a co-op game it's a co-op pve game so i guess similar to like diablo's auction house sure you could purchase power however you're not competing so is it a big deal that's that's a personal decision. That's up to you guys watching this. So, uh, all right. So besides the gear and the items, there's also a vendor here to purchase these little pets, the cute little pets here, and they last for so long and they increase different things. This guy increases my power. This guy increases my health regen. I like the little puppy, the Inugami. So we're gonna buy him. All right. So there's my Inugami, and he comes around. He follows me for 30 minutes, and he increases my power. How wonderful. And then the skills, here are the skills or the abilities. So again, prowess, fortitude, and cunning. And these are the different abilities that you can purchase. Um, and again, I am focused on, I am focused on the fortitude. Now, if I show you quickly my character info here, I've got 21 defense, 14 power, and seven skill. This is important because the abilities you can buy are based on your skill level. So for example, this high level, what, what was my power again? <laughs> 14 power and 21 defense and seven skill, okay. Seven, 14, 21, right. Um, so the higher level stuff here, I couldn't purchase. So this one requires 15 power. You can see that right there underneath the description of what Meteor Rain one is. So I would need 15 power to get this so I can't purchase it yet. Uh, because my fortitude is my focus, it's gonna be much easier for me to level up my fortitude skills. We've got these level one skills like uh, skin, of, uh, skin of Stone, Haunting Scream, Chi Prayer, and then the level two skills so I could buy myself a level two thorns. Uh, I can't quite afford the level two Chi chi mend or ring of frost yet but yeah the, these abilities will level up they get progressively more expensive and require a higher defense prowess or cunning but i could still purchase in this stuff as long as my powers as long as my uh, my base stats reach the required level for each one of these so obviously you, see, you can see i can get the level ones requires power of six three three even the cunning stuff required I, i've got a seven cunning skill so i could get this dark hunter i could get the slingshot i could get the steady shot i could get the caltrops as well it's a higher level skills that will be higher for me harder for me to get with my 100 percent fortitude focus however every time i level up i could stop dumping points into fortitude and focus on prowess or cunning if that's how i wanted to build my character um, so why don't we go ahead and buy hmm why don't I buy a power skill? So I'm gonna buy Swath of Destruction, which uh, have, has me charge forward as scatter enemies with a fast offensive dash. So why don't we buy that? It's gonna cost me uh, 1,100 little shards here. I'm gonna purchase that and there you go. So the second one I can't quite purchase yet requires power of 27 plus 
uh, a lot more shards than I currently have. But that's just to show you that's how you buy skills. Beyond the abilities of the three disciplines, there's also masteries. I am I begin the game with a two-handed mastery, so I can then purchase two-handed mastery level two. Or if I wanted to get uh, dueling or dual wielding, I could purchase those as well. But I'll likely just continue to focus on two-handed. And then an armor mastery, I start off with level one heavy armor. I can then purchase uh, level two heavy armor and continue that progression there. And I think that's everything in the town. Uh, so let's go ahead and hop in and show you the mission selection screen and show you a little bit more gameplay as we wrap up this video. Uh, so I have just finished this mission right here. You can replay the missions you've already done. So these are the missions that I have done. This was the first one and then I continue to progress here, here, and here. And this is the next mission available. You can go back to those missions. Notice the one star rating. So that means I finished the first difficulty. I could go back and then do the second difficulty. And then there will be a third and a fourth difficulty. The difficulty just makes the enemies harder in that particular level. Also increases the rewards that you get from the XP and the Karma shards. However, you cannot consistently spam redoing these missions because there's a cooldown. You can see a three minute cooldown remaining on this mission, a six minute cooldown remaining on the mission that I just completed right here. Uh, through the purchase option of using the Karma Crystals, you can finish a cooldown so that you can continuously spam farming. Uh, so that's another thing that you can use real money to sort of speed up that process. Uh, I believe when I finished this mission, the cooldown was, I think, 30 minutes? It might have been 60 even. It was a lengthy cooldown when I finished this last mission, and you can see it's still just finishing up now. Uh, but yeah, that's the other thing. So there is replayability in these missions through increased difficulty. However, there's a cooldown every time you finish one um, before you can do it another time. But I've never had to sit around waiting. I've never felt like I've been forced to purchase because I've just been continuously able to progress the story and go from mission to mission. What's going to happen when I have all the levels unlocked and then I want to try redoing those levels? I don't know how long that cooldown is going to be, so I don't know what that system is going to look like. I honestly couldn't tell you. What I can tell you, though, is that this game is, for me, fun. I've been enjoying it. Uh, let me actually... I gotta do this setup here. So why don't we drop, hmm, we could just do a second group here. We're gonna do the Swath of Destruction for my number one. And then for my number two in the second group, we will throw down Thorns and the Heal. So the only thing I'm switching between group one and two is the number one ability. So we'll have our Swath of Destruction there. And again, we can tab through and there we go. Now all of a sudden this pops up. So I love the setting, I love the world, uh, like the environment, the art, the artistic uh, style here. I just think it's it's a it's a really neat it's a really neat place uh, setting for a game to take place. Uh, I could see people being concerned about the store stuff. I have to get some more information as to whether or not the Karma crystals are available in game. After playing through the beta for about two hours now i have not seen any karma crystals just the karma shards that drop that's been it so it doesn't appear that you can get them it would make sense because this is a free to play game that there would be something that you can only purchase with real world money um, but again if this is not a competitive game and it's just a cooperative game it's pve focused grinding gear focused is it that big of a deal that you can buy boosts that you can't get through in-game currency? Is it that big of a deal that you can buy gear that you can't get through in-game currency? And how does that gear match up to the gear that you can get in-game? Is it, if it's vastly better, that then that sucks. If it's on par or less than the gear that you could potentially get in the game, then it's not that big of a deal. I think it all just comes down to preference, how you personally feel about that sort of thing in this type of game. Again, because there's no competitive aspects, there's no PvP, at least I haven't seen any. Not at this point. Without a competitive aspect, I don't find it to be a big deal. If all of a sudden they've got this huge PvP focus and people can buy gear that other people can't have access to, well then that's a problem. But again, not sure at that at this point, so can't chime in on that. What I can say is that this game's pretty fun. It's free to play. You can get it right now on the official website, which I will give you a link to below. If you'd like to purchase it through Steam Early Access to support 
uh, the developer, American McGee and uh, Spicy Horse, which is actually the same company that made Alice Madness Returns. Uh, they do have a early access program for $9.99. It gets you some in-game items, a ton of uh, 25,000 Karma Shards and 60 Karma Crystals, as well as some consumables. So you can pick that up through Steam as well, or you can just play the pl bleh, play the free version. Totally up to you guys. I can't go through there yet. That's locked. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much for watching. Once again, this has been Force checking out Akaniro Demon Hunters, available through Steam Early Access or for free on the official website. If you guys like the content, please subscribe. I do like the game. I think it's pretty neat. Hopefully, they fix up some of those uh, slight stuttering issues that I've been experiencing. Or maybe it's just me. I don't know. Keep watching and keep owning. Ooh, crystals. Aha, a secret room. What is in here? Something secret? What the heck is that? You serious? Oh wow, it's like a whole little cavern. This must be where Smallwind resides. Smallwind? Sounds dangerous.